Jack Leiter is set to make his second career Major League start. But how's he going to fare? We're going to talk about it. This is Krusty Hayes from the Gold Boys Network here, coming to you with the slate preview for May 8th. Want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Sleeper Picks. But more on that later, let's jump right into this slate. So the first game on our slate is an early one. We have the Angels taking on the Pirates. This is Jose Soriano versus Martin Perez. Uh, biggest issue for Soriano this season has been his command. Um, his in zone rate is like 40%. And uh, against this Pirates team, they're not really hitting well, but uh, they don't chase outside the zone. So if he's not throwing strikes, which, I mean, that's been the whole issue the whole season, he's going to put a ton of guys on base, and I think this Pirates team can take advantage of that. On the other side, Martin Perez, uh, he's just one of those guys who always seems to get it done. Uh, pitches a soft contact, not a big strikeout guy by any means. He gets an Angels team that overall just isn't hitting left-hand pitching well. C plus is just 74 over the last two weeks. And even for the season, they're uh, below 100. So... For me here, I, I small lean to the Pirates my line, but I really like the Pirates team total. Um, I think with the amount of base runners we're going to see here, I think they can knock you know knock a couple guys in, whether it be from you know Swinski or somebody towards the bottom of the order. I think we're going to see these guys at the top like Reynolds and Cabrian Hayes, the more disciplined guys, uh, get on base, and it's just going to be up to some of these other guys to knock them in. So give me the Pirates team total. Our next one is the Toronto Blue Jays taking on the Philadelphia Phillies. This is Chris Bassett versus Aaron Nola. For me here, I, I think you have to continue to back the Phillies. Um, this team is just scorching hot right now. Probably the best team in baseball at this point. And Chris Bassett, while he's been serviceable and while he's going to go out there, he's going to give this team, you know, every ounce of energy he has. Uh, this Phillies team is just way too locked in right now. So I go with the Phillies here. I don't love Aaron Nola. Not a, not a big Nola guy. I um, think he's just kind of past his prime. But with the way these Phillies team is swinging the bats, I I, I don't see how you don't back them. Uh, even if Nola you know gives up a few runs, which I, I think he will, uh, they're still going to win this game because the Phillies are going to score you know five, six, seven, or maybe more runs, um, just like how they have been. So give me the Phillies on the money line here. Like I said, don't love Nola, but I think their offense just carries them here. The next one is the Detroit Tigers taking on Cleveland Guardians. Reese Olsen versus Tanner Bybee. These teams pretty similar in terms of metrics and uh, just hitting wise against right-handed pitching. Uh, both with WRC plus in the 90s, batting average right around 210. Uh, so neither team really hit you know hitting the cover off the ball right now. I like the first five under. Uh, Reese Olsen, one of those guys who I think he has a lot of a lot of potential. Um, it just hasn't really fully unlocked that yet. But this is a good spot for him. Uh, you get a, t a Cleveland team without Stephen Kwan who, as I've mentioned before, I think is a huge piece. And they have a lot of short at-bats. So if he can limit hard contact and he can, you know, continue to pound the zone the way he has been, um, he should be able to work through these ones pretty quick, get through, you know, pretty quick five innings and keep this thing low scoring. On the other side, like I said, Bybee, uh, he gets a Tigers team that's just flat out not hitting right now. So give me the first five under. I think we see a duel here early. Our next one is the New York Mets taking on the St. Louis Cardinals. This is Jose Quintana versus Sonny Gray. Um, I don't see how you can't back the Cardinals here or how you don't back the Cardinals. Uh, Sonny Gray has just been absolutely outstanding. The unque you know, unquestioned ace of this squad and one of the best pitchers in all of baseball right now, truthfully. Uh, Quintana, you know, middle of the road, definitely, you know, beyond his years here. And he gets a Cardinals team that while they're not really hitting left-hand pitching that well, they are built to hit left-hand pitching. And it's a guy that they're super familiar with. So I do like the Cardinals get some runs here off of him, and I think Sonny Gray just continues to do what Sonny Gray's been doing, and that's absolutely deal. Um, if you haven't been paying attention, this guy uh, could have the best stuff in all of baseball, like, as I mentioned, and he is showing no signs of stopping. So give me the Cardinals here. Uh, it's probably going to be pretty juicy my line. I'm guessing probably around like minus 180, but that's where I go with this one. I don't I don't trust the run line here personally, but I do like the Cardinals on my line. Maybe a uh, Sonny Gray performance double of some sorts, depending on the line. But Cardinals, my line. The next one is the Milwaukee Brewers taking on the Kansas City Royals. It's Joe Ross versus Brady Singer. Brady Singer pitches a soft, you know, pitches a soft contact. He's had pretty good success this season. A lot of people would say that he's lucky. Um, I'm kind of in between. I think he has had some pretty good luck with some of these teams he's faced, but I also think that he's just doing a really good job this year, hitting his spots and missing bats. Um, he does give up quite a bit of hard contact when, when people do make contact, 
But overall, he's done a pretty good job of just limiting that contact period. So for me in this one, uh, Joe Ross, one of those guys who just, you know, going to put a lot of guys on base. Walks are always a problem. Uh, you know, bat on ball is always a problem. Uh, I like the Royals team total here. I think they're at home. I trust their bats to get going. I'm guessing it's going to be probably like four and a half. Um, I think you could take that. I think they cover it pretty easy. Like I said, Joe Ross going to allow a ton of base traffic and just be up to some of these, you know, bigger bigger guys in the lineup to knock him in. Michael Massey, you know, he loves hitting right-handed pitching. He should be in the lineup tomorrow. Maybe even MJ Melendez, who's been kind of quiet. Uh, this could be the game that he breaks out. So give me the Royals team total. Our next one is the San Diego Padres taking on the Chicago Cubs. This is Dylan Cease versus Hayden Wisniewski. Wisniewski was not very good in his first start, looked really good in his second start. Um, things surprised a lot of people, including myself. Did not expect him to pitch as well as he did against Milwaukee. Then this one, I'm going with the Padres. Uh, you got Cease on the bump. He's one of those guys where when Cease is pitching, you back him. Um, one of the best pitchers in baseball so far this season. Padres have really seemed to figure out his command issues. Um, the walks have not been nearly as big a problem as they were last season. Uh, he's pitching deep in the games, and ultimately, I think he keeps them in this one. Like I said, Wisniewski looked really good in his last start. I just don't think he can keep that up. He's a two-pitch pitcher, fastball slider, and uh, this Padres team, uh, if, you're, if you're only throwing two pitches and you're not hitting your spots on one of them, they're going to do some damage. So I like the Padres here. I, I'm hoping they can give us some run support, but I think they get it done with Cease on the mound. The next one is the Marlins taking on the Dodgers. It's Ryan Weathers versus Gavin Stone. And the Dodgers are a minus 275 on the money line with Gavin Stone. An absolutely ridiculous price for considering who's pitching. Um, I have no interest in that. I do like the Dodgers in some capacity. Uh, Ryan Weathers, a lefty, not very good. I like the Dodgers team total here. Uh, this team is really starting to swing it. We've seen it these last few games of the series. I think it just continues. When you're hot, you're hot. Uh, these guys are taking advantage, and they're beating, they're beating the teams they should beat. And while I think they win this one, there's just no value for me in that money line at minus 275 or laying a juice run line. So I'll opt for the Dodgers team total here. I think they easily cover it. Wait, um, our... before we get back to the picks, I wanted to thank you all for watching. Woo! Friends don't let friends watch videos without hitting the like button. So go ahead and press the thumbs up button and like the video. If you're new here and not subscribed, you should go ahead and do so because we're dropping new content each and every day on the Gold Boys Network. We strive to cover every sport and give out picks and analysis and valuable information for free on the Gold Boys Network. So make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell so you can get notified when we drop something new. I'm Brad Thomas. Let's get back to the picks. Um, our next two on the slate are the doubleheader between the Rangers and the Athletics, so we'll go through them one at a time. The first one is Michael Lorenzen versus J.P. Sears. Uh, my favorite look at this one is going to be Michael Lorenzen pitching outs. I'm not sure what it's going to be set at yet, but game one of a doubleheader. They have Jack Leiter going game two, who we already know struggled in his first start. I think Lorenzen's going to be good for six innings at a minimum here. I think they're going to give him the leash to go six innings at a minimum here because they're going to need it. Uh, JP Sears, more than serviceable. This Rangers team, not really hitting left-handed pitching overall. So in this one, I'm going to opt for the first five under. I lean full game under as well, but these bullpens have get, been getting a little bit of use these last few games. So I'm going to opt for the first five. I'm going to trust these starters to keep it low scoring. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see this one like 0-0, zero, zero, you know, 1-0 after five. Game two of that doubleheader is Jack Leiter versus Oswaldo Beto. So Beto was a prospect in the Pirates organization. Uh, he's now with Oakland. Jack Leiter, as we all know, one of their top prospects for the Rangers. So this will be an interesting game here. I'm expecting both guys to be on relatively short leashes. And I'm expecting both teams to definitely be opting to use their bullpens in game two rather than game one. So for me here, I like the over. Um, I think Leiter's going to struggle against this Oakland team. They're one of those teams that's just doing a really good job of putting bat on ball right now. You know, not necessarily hard contact. But they're putting balls in play, and they're making teams work. And when you, you've seen it in numerous games for them where they put the ball in play and good things happen. So Leiter, um, when he pitched against the Tigers, he looked good for like the first inning and a half. And then they kind of figured out what he was trying to do, where it was like he get you two strikes. And it was just like wipe out slider, wipe out slider, wipe out slider. And they weren't chasing it. So unless he's drastically changed that, which I doubt because it's what he's been doing in the minors, um, he's going to do the same thing here. And I think this Oakland team is smart enough to lay off of that. 
and ultimately, you know, put some balls in play and get some guys on base. And then Beto is just, I mean, to put it lightly, he's just not good. This is a guy who, when he pitched for the Pirates, you know, expected ERA was up over five, expecting bad average was, you know, near 300. And I think he's going to struggle against this Texas team. So give me the over here. I think we get, get this over pretty easy in game two. Our next one is the Arizona Dimebacks taking on the Cincinnati Reds. This is Jordan Montgomery versus Graham Ashcraft. And for me here, you're playing at Great American Ballpark, and it's absolutely terrifying. But give me the first five under. Graham Ashcraft is a first five wizard. I don't know what it is. He's one of the best pitchers in all of baseball, like the first two times through the order. Uh, like sub 150 batting average against. I mean, it, it's incredible. And this Arizona team is just flat out not hitting right now. Um, one of the worst hitting teams in baseball for right-handed pitching. Other side, the Reds, not really hitting right left-handed pitching either. And Montgomery is one of those guys who's been, you know, great at limiting hard contact. Uh, works quick, you know, forces you to swing it, it, swing because he's putting the ball in the zone so consistently. Um, and I just like the under here. I think it's gonna be a boring first five, but it's gonna be a pitcher's duel. So give me the first five under in this one. I like Jordan Montgomery's pitching outs as well. And although he's not a big strikeout guy, you really couldn't talk me off his case depending on the lines at. It's like a four and a half. I, I might I may take a stab at it. When you got guys like Will Benson and Ellie De La Cruz in the lineup, I mean, you're talking probably three Ks and a minimum combined from those two um, just because of the lack of discipline at the plate. And then obviously top to bottom, you're looking at probably seven targets uh, regardless of who they put out there. Our next one is the Baltimore Orioles taking on the Washington Nationals. This is Kyle Brash versus Mitchell Parker. Um, <laughs> I expressed some concerns with the Corbin Burns game uh, yesterday, and I don't have as many concerns with this one, but I'm still not willing to lay the heavy juice on the road with Baltimore when they just haven't proven they can really put these games together away from uh, their home field. So Baltimore's minus 170 on the money line. I don't have any interest in touching that. Uh, Mitchell Parker, he's looked pretty good in one start or like two starts and then the last two he's kind of got hit up a little bit he gets a baltimore team that really is hitting left-handed pitching extremely well strikeouts have been a bit of an issue but i'm not sure that parker's the guy to do it because his command of his off speed has just been absolutely terrible so i think for me in this one i'm gonna look at the orioles team total um, i think they can put up runs like i said i don't have a ton of interest in backing them on the money line i think it's just too heavy of a price for me for a team that's been just been way too inconsistent on the road but I am going to back their bats here. I'm going to back them off because you know, I do think they can get some offense going against Parker. Um, so give me the Orioles team total. What's going on, everybody? I just want to take this moment to give a special shout out to our sponsor, Sleeper Picks. Thank you for sponsoring this video. And don't forget, you can use code GOLDBOYS for a $500 deposit match on your first deposit. Thank you, Sleeper Picks, for sponsoring this video. Now back to the bets. Our next one is the Chicago White Sox. Take on Tampa Bay Rays, Chris Flexen versus Aaron Savale. Uh, give me the Rays. This is the classic, don't overthink it. You have the Sox who've lost two in a row to the Rays. Everyone's going to be saying, you know, oh, it's so hard to get swept. It's so hard to sweep a team. Um, the Rays are hot, and the Sox have finally come back to reality where they're just the bad team that we all thought they were. And that continues here. Um, these Rays bats are scorching at the plate, and they're going to light up Flexen. As simple as that. So if you're not comfortable taking Tampa Bay as a side, I like Tampa Bay's team total. I think that cash is just as easy. Um, but I think Savali is going to deal here. I think the Rays take take care of business. You can take the Rays on the run line, whatever you want. Uh, Rays in every which way in this one. Our next one is the Houston Astros versus New York Yankees. This is Spencer Argetti versus Carlos Rodon. Um, <laughs> tough spot for Rodon. Obviously, Houston, one of the best left-handed hitting, left-handed pitching, left-handed pitching hitting teams in all of baseball. Wow, that was a mouthful. Um, <laughs> and they have one of the lowest K percents for left-handed pitching as well. So for me here, I do like Rodon under his strikeouts. I'm not sure what the line's going to be, but I'm always down to fade Rodon. Uh, just not a guy who I like to back personally. Um, in terms of the side, though, I don't love backing Rodon, period, in terms of the side, because like I said, I just... I could see him getting lit up here. I'm just not sure how willing I am to trust Sargetti against this Yankees team, who the bats seem to be waking up a bit. So I'm going to go with the over. Um, this total is pretty low. 
and I think it's gonna. I think a lot of people are gonna, you know, see Rodon. They're gonna want to take the under, and I understand that. But I just think this Houston team, the way they hit left-handed pitching, they're gonna give Rodon some issues. And then on the other side, Argetti, I think this is one of those spots where the Yankees can get to him. Um, the bats, like I said, they're starting to wake up a little bit. I think we see runs. You know, I could see a, a five-four final score here. I, I think that you know is within reason for sure. Our next one is the Boston Red Sox taking the Atlanta Braves. So Nick Pavetta versus Chris Sale. Um, Pavetta coming off injury, going to be on, on uh, some sort of pitch count. My, if I had to guess, I'm going to say it's probably around five innings, 80 pitches, just from what I've been reading. I, I like his strikeouts, depending on what, we get, what line we get for him. Uh, this Braves team just super undisciplined as of late. 28% uh, K rate for right-handed pitching over the last two weeks. Top five in chase rate, bottom five in chase contact. So, you know, two, two uh, things that don't really mix well together. So, I like Pavetta K's. Uh, Chris Sale, I think you look at his strikeouts too. Uh, you get a Boston team who, you know, overall is just striking out above league average, around 24% for the season. And uh, Chris Sale, I, I don't want to say a revenge narrative, but, you know, he's facing Boston. It's a team that he felt like they kind of mismanaged him a little bit. So it could be a little extra chip here. Not not saying it's going to be the uh, Jack Flaherty legacy game that we saw against the Cardinals, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's got a little extra juice for this one. Um, in terms of the side, I'm going to go with the Braves. I like Chris Sale. I like this Braves team. They're scuffling a bit right now, but I think this is just a spot where they can get it done. Pavetta, even if he gets the strikeouts, I think he gets hit around a little bit. It's always kind of been the, the bugaboo with him. Is uh, you know He's going to get his Ks. He's going to sit guys down, but he's going to have some runs. And I think ultimately the Braves can get to him here. So give me the Braves on the money line. I think they handle this one. Our next one is the Seattle Mariners taking on the Minnesota Twins. It's George Kirby versus Chris Paddock. Give me the Mariners. You got the Mariners favorite on the road here. Obviously, George Kirby the better pitcher. But I think that's pretty telling because overall, these teams are hitting very similar. They're not hitting well. And so to have Kirby on the mound, who really hasn't been – like the Kirby of old that we saw last season. He's been okay. His last start was really good. But overall, he's just been very average. Um, he lives in the zone a lot, so I am a bit concerned against guys like uh, Larnich or Kirloff. Uh, but overall, I just think that Seattle's going to get this one done. Uh, Paddock is not good. And uh, he's had a few good starts, and I think people are starting to give him a little bit of respect. And this is right about the time where he decides to burn everybody, in my opinion. So give me the Mariners here as a small favorite on the road. Uh, I like Kirby. I think they get it done. Um, and I'm hoping the bats can wake up a little bit and get us some run support. The last one on the slate is the San Francisco Giants taking on the Colorado Rockies. This is Jordan Hicks versus Peter Lambert. You got to give me the Giants here. Uh, Jordan Hicks, sub one ERA still. Uh, this guy is incredible. Um, so he was a reliever last season. Uh, dialed everything back a bit so he could be a starter and he's just been borderline unhittable um features like a like a power sinker type pitch with a sweeper and both pitches are absolutely devastating and against this rockies team i mean we all know they're just not hitting and they're striking out a ton they're chasing a ton and i think hicks absolutely deals here uh, i don't love backing their offense they're just not they're just not hitting period but um i like backing hicks and i think even in an ugly one you know they win this one 2-0, you know, 2-1, something of that nature. Uh, just because Hicks has been so outstanding, and I just don't think this Rockies team has the guys to, to change that. That does conclude our slate. If you guys could drop a like, drop a comment, let me know what you guys like. I always love reading them. Um, as always, you can get all my plays at goldboys.com. We are on quite a run right now. Nine straight green days for your guy. Um, and if you have a gambling problem, don't want to hire a gambler. Thanks, guys.